So we're officially going to go through this entire process. We're going to start from the stage of the communication agreement and go all the way down. The left side is going to be the admin back end. The admin back end will allow you to see everything from start to finish. It also gives you the ability to make changes. Let's say if someone comes in at a certain stage, then you can be able to change that and I'll show you how to change that as well. So the first and foremost thing that I want to show you is that each of these steps are connected to circles and audiences. I've tested this a couple of times, so there's a few things that um, I may do in the midst of this um, because this is a perfecting process. When they come in as a client, they'll be seeing a few things. So on their mini bar, we are going to have a designated tax return process. This is gonna showcase the actual return that they're in. Um, this is going to be produced from an actual update form. So when they come in at first, um, you'll designate them to what um, actual onboarding decision that will be. So in this case, let's take a look at this form. This form will first allow you to choose the client. So we're gonna say the client is Marie. And then after you choose a client, it will show the first and last name. There is some text here and we have a CSS that right now we're, we're working on, but the actual text here says, you know, to select if they're going through a tax process or a bookkeeping process, you'd go ahead and drop and select that here. Now, again, apologies for the CSS issues, um, but that is what will happen. Once you select that 1040 process, it will do two things. It will add them specifically to the 1040 circle, which is this circle here, and then it will also add them to the first stage, which is going to be the communication agreement. So those are the two things that happens after completing that form. I want to highlight here that this menu drop down can be customized so you can literally add them to as many stages as you want um, from that little option of the form and that would reveal to them then the tax process they will be in and I know a lot of times people do I don't know because I'm not a tax professional, so I could be screwing this up, but a lot of people are doing 1040 first and then business. Um, so in that case, or it could be flipped. So maybe they're doing business first and then 1040, whatever it is, you can add them to that first and then have them complete the entire process and then get them back here. It is all up to you. I've also um, given them a dashboard. So that dashboard does allow them to just have quick access to the quick links. Of course, because I'm all squished up right now, you can't see the beauty of it, but the dashboard is customizable. You can edit the, uh, the quick links if you wanted to. You can also edit what they see on here. And so if they ever wanted to log out and come back in, they can see where they left off. I like that feature because it gives you the flexibility of always having updates on this dashboard if needed. Um, I've also limited what they see. So they can see messaging, they can see office, but only a few items because not everything is relevant to them. And of course they can see their files. So let's start the process and let's go over to the 1040 tax return. Again, I'm going to kind of have this um, kind of smudged on this side only because it will just make a lot more sense when you're navigating through. And I'm going to make this one a little bit wider for us to see the client's perspective. So um, this in itself is the communication agreement. And this is what you'll do. They'll go ahead and sign. Now, them signing, this is just an individual process. So the individual process would allow them to click and move through. I do have this set as a start page for them. So they will automatically be refreshed and going back to the next stage, which is going to be the engagement letter. And they'll go ahead and do the same process. They'll go through this entire step here. This one, I have it that it, it um, automatically pre-presents their name, but they can still you know, do it. So either or works. This is just for one person. So this is just the individual stage here. And then once they submit, it's a please hold for a refresh, and then it takes them to the next stage. So the paid deposit stage is the stage where now is a checkout form. And so this checkout form is going to pre-select the actual um, tax refund. And so once they get on that stage, then they will have to pay this invoice in order to move forward to the organizer. Uh, and 
on this side, we were at one, but because we were transitioning from one over to the engagement letter, that was going to be two. But now they're actually at three, which is paid deposits, because that's now giving them the ability to go ahead and do the deposit. Because I'm not going to do the deposit in here, I can take myself out of that and I can put myself in the next stage, which is going to be the organizer one. So when we do the organizer one on this screen, let's say that they went to the home screen or they signed out for a day, came back in, whatever may have you, they come in, they'll be fresh and brand new at that space. They can also, again, click back at that tax return space and they'll be there back. This is the 1040 organizer. This organizer is pretty complex. It has all the things in there. And of course, it does a beautiful thing of when you submit, it changes to the second one because this is part one. But there is a part two, so the wording does change for part two, and it is still pulling from that first like um, portal page, so everything is still pulling correctly. And let me show you what part two will look like. Over here. So this is part two of the form, and of course, um, what we did is because I know that is important for the actual organizer to trigger the project, what I did is I made it so that after they submit this, that it just triggers that project generator. So we're going to do this by just answering all these questions. I believe I got everything. I really didn't even need to do anything but the, the ones for um, asterisks. Did I miss one? I did. Let me see if I missed anything else. No. Okay. So go ahead and submit this. And so what this does now is it allows them to submit. Um, I will advise that sometimes when you hit the submit button, it does take a little second to produce the next screen. So um, it's always good to have like a disclaimer to say, hey, you know, it's going to take a second to, this, to, to just produce the next screen. It does that. It will take them to this beautiful updates page. Now, what happens on the left side, again, I moved from the organizer. Now I'm going to be in the updates um stage the update stage is pretty much all back end it's all of you and your team just making the adjustments i'm going to make this bad boy bigger and what happens is it will trigger um a project generator so let's go over to projects i call them now services and all services because this client specifically does different stuff and he's awesome if you don't know if this is thorough financial. Um, and so what happens here is it produces this beautiful task list here with some templates that um, is predestined for the specific tax. Now we can place a actual dashboard, like a project dashboard for you, your team. It can give them some custom fields and some other things. I don't necessarily know if you guys need that. But this is the start of the beauty of it all. So um, with this, you guys have the ability to mark items complete. When you mark items complete, the purpose of this is to give the client some updates. So on this page here, and I believe I set this part up already, but on this page here, this progress bar is a active progress bar that is triggered i did not <laughs> that is triggered by a custom field so this is the stage that i'm currently setting up for this client where um, anytime they make a progress update or a task update based on the amount and number of tasks in here which this is 24 then essentially it will progress that bar and it does not mean that everything has to be completed but the cool thing is is that every time that something is completed you are able to trigger an email so in this case this is the email that was triggered uh, and so of course please bypass the fact that it's, it's not 
size right this email tool just doesn't size for some reason but i can show you what it generates directly out of here if you guys didn't know about the, the um, activity stream it's a beautiful place to do it the activity stream is um, where you can see all of your emails and all the things and then inside of here um, you can also see all of the activity that was done by yourself or any person with um you know you can see who makes changes based on um, the IP address. So the other cool thing is as well, they just recently added a resend to email option, which is really cool. So this is the email that was sent, spacing perfect. You can see that it says document review complete. It's dynamic, so it says their name. It says we've done it. You know, we reviewed all the submitted documents and confirmed that everything we need is in place. Now, if you did not have everything in place, you can obviously um, send a manual message to them, either in the project, which is what I recommend, because you want to keep everything inside of the actual project. So you want to go ahead back into the services and you want to make sure that inside of this working project, that you are utilizing the client talk um, to communicate with them. So the client talk is a great space to actually communicate with people if you wanted to send them updates. Um, and so I like to do this this way and you can also turn on convenience mode convenience mode would allow you to have conversations with them directly through the email so they don't have to sign directly into the portal they can just communicate directly through there um, it's very convenient and you can see who created it um, in this case it's me <laughs> uh, when they see it through email it will show up as yourself with your name and all the things um, and so that's that's the fun part about it. Now, as a client, right, remember that they would see this progression moving forward here. Um, but the other thing that will happen as well is they will also have the ability to potentially see the overall uh, services standpoint, like the actual like services list. I blocked it off for them. Um, and that's something you can activate. A lot of people don't want the uh, client to see it because it's something internal for you, but if you wanted to do it, you can. All right, so let's go through now the actual task. So once you get down to tasks, you are marking items complete. When you're marking items complete, it's either gonna trigger an automation to send an email. Um, you're doing a lot of manual steps here. Now, when it comes to the um, the overall process of approval there is another admin box that we put in and so this is what you would actually fill out in this space again i do apologize for the white text we are working on some css and so what you should see is these instructions these instructions are giving you you know the information as to how to fill the form out and so here you're going to put it in the loom video i do not have a loom video right now i don't even know what video i have that i can share here but let's see if i can find a video really quickly okay guys this is not the best <laughs> time okay so i don't have a video here to showcase but let's say that you did have a video. Let's try this link. And then let's say that you had a space where you wanted them to click to actually sign a document. Ironically, I have this. So I would go ahead now and hit submit. And um, once you hit submit, then I'm gonna go back to the actual client's uh, interface. So I'm gonna go over to the CRM and over to contacts. This is in the space that essentially they're ready to review, right? And of course, you've gone down all of your tax processes, your, your tasks. So you've gone down all through your tasks and you've done all that stuff. That's great. And what we're doing now is we're going to remove them out of updates manually. 
and I'm going to put them in approval. Now, you will not do this manually, but this is something that I'm doing manually because I didn't go through all the tasks. So I'm added to that circle. And I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to show you what it looks like on this end. So the beauty of this is that it will allow you to, in this sense, if it's a YouTube video, it would show up here as YouTube or Vimeo. So that's pretty cool. But if they wanted to actually view their tax return, this would be a link hyperlinked out. And if they wanted to schedule a call, they could. I don't have a link for this yet, but I know that you guys possibly do it differently where you are able to have like um, a DocuSign or things like that. And then this pops up the appointment that they will schedule on. On this page as well, though, we can do the final invoice. So the final invoice can be also initiated or we can have um, a button that says, yep, I've reviewed, it's great. And then the next stage would be invoice, which then they would go ahead and have that another invoice generator, which will do all the things. And then let's say that they go through that process, then they'll go into the other stage, which is going to be the filing. Now the filing again is going to just be a visual stage. It's going to be them um, seeing that you're working on the back end. So it's not anything for them to do. You're going to continue to go back through your actual process and your task. And that is what that looks like here. So we'll notify you when it's done. When you mark the task complete, that you've completely followed it, then it would automatically then move them to the next stage, which is going to be the next steps. So next steps is really debatable. It's up to you. Maybe it just says, congratulations, we filed, you're approved. Maybe it um, is a stage that you essentially just have information to say, thank you, you know, return back to your dashboard. This just returns them back to the dashboard and says, thanks. Um, and then that can be an indicator for you then to start them back on the next cycle. cycle. Um, that also can be a button that, that has an auto template that says, hey, once they click that button, then they'll be removed from that 1040 circle so they no longer would be on any of these and once they've been removed from those two circles then essentially they won't see the actual uh, tax return process because they're not on that tax return anymore so that takes them out of that that entire circle itself that menu itself and then they're just here now when they're starting up the return of a process there is going to be a button that we create here that says begin my tax process and that's going to be um, a button that they can use here and um on there is going to be a form that says begin my 2020 five tax process and that 2025 tax process would be um just a, a declaration to say i'm ready to get started with my 2025 tax process and it puts them in the actual category that they want to go in so if they're supposed to do their 1040 first they'll say i want to start my 1040 um, and they'll click that and it takes them right back through that stage so that is the full work through it's pretty simple um, it is very interactive and i hope that that was informative for you it does work for the all of the individuals for the spouses it does take a little bit of a different maneuvering or working on that back end process but i hope that this is helpful um and yeah we are working on an actual course um for those who are interested on seeing a course on all of the setup processes we're working on the course and it will be selling hopefully in late november early november god's willing um, for you guys to be able to set up this entire process on your own i want it to be very simple for you to be able to do it and also for you to navigate with um, any questions and if you do have questions feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can go to Royal Assistance slash Sweet Dash, or you can simply just send me an email at Sweet Dash at Royal and we'll support you. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to all of your beautiful setups.